Tonight, we're, the message is entitled, Pray for Open Hearts. And prayer is something, and actually, you can turn your Bibles to uh, Psalms 119 and Acts 16. We'll be there after a while. Um, pray for open hearts. We're commanded to pray in Scripture often, uh, encouraged to pray often in the Word of God. We see examples of many prayers in the Word of God. It's a good study to do sometime to uh, look at all the prayers in the Bible. And, uh, a, lot of, a lot of prayers in the Bible and a lot of good stuff there. One of the few things that, uh, uh, that uh, we're told to never stop doing, in fact, is to pray, isn't it? In um, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, uh, Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. And he backs that up too. You search for that phrase in the book of Acts. You see it all the time in, in, the, in, the, in, the, God, in the epistles that Paul wrote, the letters he wrote. He says, I was praying without ceasing to you that God would work on your behalf and all these things. That, and I remembered you always in remembrance in my prayers. Paul truly believed that he prayed without ceasing. One of the things that the disciples asked Jesus, uh, uh, they didn't ask Jesus how to preach. They didn't ask Jesus how to do a lot of stuff. They saw, ask him how to do miracles. They said, Jesus, could you teach us how to pray? Isn't that odd? But yet if I were in Jesus' ministry, if I were one of his uh, disciples, you know what, I, 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 I think I probably wouldn't ask for prayer. I would ask, God, show me how to preach. Show me how to do the miracles. Show me how to do the great things that you do. But they said, teach me how to pray. Could it be that the disciples knew that the secret behind Jesus' ministry was prayer? I bet so. The sad fact of the matter is that most people, most Christians don't pray. If you interview people and they've done studies on this, one of the things, one of the common things that always shows up, one of the, uh, the things that uh, Christians are always so uh, discouraged about in their Christian life, that they're always trying to improve, is their prayer life. Nobody's ever satisfied with their prayer life. If you ask, even, even pastors, uh, a lot of pastors would, uh, would admit that probably one of the weakest parts of their Christian life is their prayer life. But is that the way it should be? No, it shouldn't. The strongest part of our Christian lives should be our prayer lives. That is where the most focus, and we'll look at that in a second. And, and in fact, most people don't pray. Most, and most people who do pray, we, we pray selfishly, don't we? But prayer is not about us at all. Prayer is about the Lord and about others. We should pray to God. We should praise Him. We should thank Him. We should glorify and lift up His wonderful name. We should just try to spend time in His presence alone. What's that verse? Uh, be still and know that I am God. That's what He wants from us. He wants us to be still in His presence and not even say things sometimes. Just know that He is God and be in His presence. God uh, is, is the, is the, should be the object of our prayers. Others should be the object of our prayers as well. We're to intercede on the behalf of others. And surely that's what Jesus did many times in His prayers, didn't He? He'd go to the Father on our behalf on the people's behalf, on the disciples' behalf. And many record, prayers are recorded of Jesus, how He prayed on the behalf of other people and He interceded in their life. You know, one of the things that uh, some people have noticed, and, and, and I've noticed lately, and, and, and I, it's funny, uh, William, you mentioned this uh, when you were praying, and how we go through seasons of life, don't we? There's different seasons of life, and there's ups and downs. And, and one thing I've noticed lately is, is it seems like our attendance numbers have been down a little bit here. And uh, it's something I've been praying about. And, and uh, maybe you have noticed, I've had some discussions with a bunch of people about that. And, and, and people are noticing that. And I've heard many people say uh, it's a common thing that we need revival in our church. And surely we should always want revival, shouldn't we? We should always want revival and the power of God to move on this place. But I wonder if we spend as much time praying about what was going on and praying about the fact that our attendance numbers may be down or that we need revival, that we do talking about it. I wonder if we might see some change. See, we spend sometimes too much time talking about it with each other instead of talking to the Lord about it, who's the one who can do something about it. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't talk about it. I'm glad many people are concerned. And praise the Lord, that's the beginning. You've got to notice, you've got to feel the burden in our hearts. But it can't stop there. It, our burdens should drive us to our knees and drive us to His throne. 
where we bring our petitions to Him. See, prayer is something that's just so, that is so vital uh, to our lives, and it, it is the, the major thing of our life. I heard this quote, uh, and it really, it really blew me away. And it challenged me. It said this, that we pray often in the context of ministry. We pray in context of ministry, but Jesus ministered in the context of prayer. Think about that for a second. See, we minister or we pray because we have a ministry. And we're, we're, we, we go to God and say, God, you know, we have this ministry and we're doing this thing for you. God, can you bless it? But that's not the way Jesus did it, is it? Jesus ministered because he prayed, because he talked to the Father, and the Father spoke to him and said, Jesus, here's where I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. And Jesus ministered because he had a prayer life and because he had a walk with God, and God directed him to do everything that Jesus did. In fact, Jesus said himself, I didn't do anything of myself. It was the Father that did it. But yet we pray in the context of ministry. And we're busy about doing many things, but... The situation is true that when we work, we work, but when we pray, God works. And we need to pray, folks, tonight. We need to pray so God can work. Let me ask you this tonight. Is our ministry that which is done for God or that which is done by God? Is our ministry that which is done for God or that which is done by God? See, everything we do at Bible Baptist Church, every ministry we do, should be done by God. It shouldn't be us doing things for God. It should be things being done by God through us. But that takes the Holy Spirit, doesn't it? And that takes the power of God on our lives. But it's so easy just to do things ourselves than it is to rely on God to do it through us, isn't it? And many churches are operating in such a way that if the Holy Spirit were suddenly removed from their program, nobody, nobody would notice that anything had happened. Let me ask you tonight and challenge you to think this. As, as I, I've been thinking about this in my, in, in my life this week. As the Lord has been preparing my heart and giving me this message. What would happen in your ministry, the place where you serve, if the Holy Spirit was removed? Would things be able to go about as normal? And I've been challenged about that. And I said, Lord, Lord, take away what is done on my behalf and my ministry. Lord, you do the work. And God, I want to rely on your Holy Spirit in everything that is done here. Lord, may you be doing it and not me. And may I follow your leadership and, and be led by you, Holy Spirit. That has been my prayer this week. And I pray you cha I challenge you as well to, to look at that. But so often, we do our work for God and instead of the work being done by God. And, and the Holy Spirit, many times in many churches across the nation and across the world, the Holy Spirit isn't even there and things keep going on just regular. And nobody notices that the Holy Spirit is gone. Emotion and excitement are still created, but the Holy Spirit is optional many times today. But that is not the way it should be, church. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, as we're going to look, God is the only way that anything can be done. There's nothing spiritual that can happen here at Bible Baptist Church apart from God, apart from the Holy Spirit of God. I just want to simplify things real fast as we look at this. And I want, you to, I want to look at this this way. What is our goal as a church? What is our goal as a church? Our goal is, first of all, always to bring honor and glory to God. That is our goal as a church. That is our goal as Christians. That is our goal in ministries is to bring honor and glory to Jesus. That's first and foremost. And everything should be built around that. For if we're, what we're doing isn't bringing honor and glory to God, then how can God work and how can God be praised? Everything that we do should revolve around that. But what is our goal? Our goal as a church is simply this, and our goal as Christians should be this, to make disciples. That's why Jesus left us here. And the last words that Jesus left us with was to make disciples. We're to see the lost saved, we're to see believers baptized as they follow Jesus, and we're to see disciples growing in the faith. But let me tell you tonight, if that is our goal, if that is our goal, to make disciples and to bring honor and glory to God, the only way that can happen is through the power of God. 
There's nothing I can do on my own and my power tonight standing behind this desk, standing before you. I can't give anything to you today that would change your life. Uh, it may change it for five minutes. It can't transform you, though. Only the gospel of our Lord can do that. And His Word can change lives and can transform lives that will never be the same again. You know, the work that is done here at Bible Baptist Church should be uh, the making of disciples can only happen through the power of God. And tonight, the only way we get the power of God and for God to work in hearts, which is the goal, is through Him. And that is why we need to be much in prayer for God to move and for God to change hearts. See, all this, this work, this spiritual work that we're called to can only be done by God. The making of disciples, lost people, hearing the gospel and being saved, and believers being baptized, and disciples growing. That can only happen when hearts are open to the word, through the word of God. Their hearts are open and people are drawn unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, it is God that has to do the work. Before we get to our main text tonight, let's look at John chapter 6 real fast. John chapter 6 and verse um, 44. I want to see you show you this verse. We, we, we use this verse often. We, we uh, mention it. But let's just read a few of these verses together tonight to kind of set the stage for our message here. John chapter 6 verse 44. Here Jesus says this. He says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. Did you hear that? Jesus himself said that no man can come to me except the Father draw him. Did you hear that? Jesus said that himself. How am I going to bring spiritual change in the life of somebody sitting here tonight? Or there somebody who hear the voice, my voice over through the media that's going to go out as this message travels forth into the world? How can anybody be drawn to Christ without the Father? It cannot happen. Hey, if Jesus couldn't do it, there's no way I can and there's no way you can either. We have to have God. This is all about God. Everything that we do as we serve, it's all about Him. We have to have His power on the ministry. And it has to be what He is doing. In John 14, uh, just turn up a few pages. John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, 26, Jesus says this. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus said, hey, soon I'm going to be leaving. And after I leave, God is sending somebody. He's sending the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. And he is going to do, notice what he said he's going to do there? He said, he shall teach you all all things. He said, disciples, he said, do you know how you're going to be led? Do you know how you're no, going to know what to do after I'm gone? He said, God's going to send somebody, the Holy Ghost, and he will teach you all things. In fact, Jesus, remember when he was up in the mountain, he said, uh, he told him they had to go out and go everywhere to proclaim the gospel. Hey, but he told him to go into the upper room for a while because he didn't want them going out and messing everything up on their own. Why? Because in just a little while, the Holy Spirit was going to come and and until the Holy Spirit come, they didn't do anything great. Oh, but as soon as the Holy Spirit came, what happened? Everybody started hearing the message in their own uh, language. The cloven tongues of fire came down and, and amazing miracles were done. Why? Through the power of the Holy Spirit who taught them all things, who led them in all things. See, we have to have the Holy Spirit in the ministry that's done here at Bible's Baptist Church. And in fact, I, and if you notice, I'm having trouble phrasing what I'm saying because here's the thing, hey, no ministry can be done at Bible Baptist apart from Him. But so often we say, the ministry that we do at Bible Baptist, but we can't do it. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. I hope you see that tonight. And if I'm mistaken, say the stuff we're doing, hey, it's us doing it through the power of the Holy Spirit as He leads us and as He guides us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 9 and 10 says, But, I, uh, but, but uh, as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them which love him. But God hath revealed, it, revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hey, the Spirit reveals amazing things to us through the Word of God. 
In fact, there's no way that we can know the Word of God apart from the Holy Spirit of God. In fact, he says later on that passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. He said, hey, the, the unsaved man cannot hear, receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You hear what that means? A lost person cannot hear and be drawn to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ except for the Holy Spirit working in his life and moving in his heart. The work that we do for Christ as He leads us can only be done through His Spirit. It is the only way. And tonight, my my, my simple plea is and petition, my petition to you is to do the work, is for God to do the work that only He can do. And tonight, as I as I challenge us to for, to pray for to for God to do the work that only He can do, and the work that only God can do tonight is to open hearts. So often, don't we, we get so caught up in just doing church and that we don't, that, that, uh, that what we're doing has, uh, we, what we're doing has nothing to do with what really matters. And tonight, we need to get back to our calling as a church. And that starts with petitioning God to do what only He can do in open hearts. See, through open hearts, lives will be changed at Bible Baptist Church. Through open hearts, souls will be saved in our midst. And people will walk the aisles and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Through open hearts, as as we go out in the community, we can reach lost people at our workplaces and in our homes and at at, uh, gatherings as we gather together at restaurants or wherever. People will be saved through our witness, but only as hearts are open to the gospel. Through open hearts, Christians will surrender their lives to the Lord to serve Him with everything they have. But only, but only through open hearts. Tonight, one of the greatest needs in Bible Baptist Church is for God to open the hearts of His people and for God to open the hearts of the lost people that may even be here tonight with us. Tonight, are you lost? Were you here this morning? Did you hear the message? You know what? I I just believe there's somebody here today that still. You were here this morning. You heard the message. You heard. You felt the spirit pricking your heart. Your heart was open, but yet you didn't respond to the truth tonight. I just want to beg you again. Respond. Respond to the truth of the word of God. And trust Jesus as your savior tonight. There's still time for you tonight. Won't you respond to the truth of the word of God? Tonight, I just have two simple points and two quick things to share with you. As we need to pray for open hearts, and our first prayer should be this. Our first prayer is to pray that your heart will be open. Pray that your heart will be opened. Let me ask you, when was the last time that God spoke to your heart? When was the last time that God, maybe not audibly, but you just knew God's presence was all over you and you knew He was speaking to you. Maybe you were sitting in a church service like this. Maybe you were opening up your Bible in the morning or in the evening or during the day when you were reading and fellowshipping with the Lord and, and the Lord was there with you and you knew His presence was about you as He was speaking to your heart. When was the last time tonight that your heart was open and God spoke? To you. I love this quote, and it's one of my favorite quotes when it comes to having a relationship with the Lord and or having a personal or having a, a walk with God, a walk with God in, in your relationship with Him. Uh, John Piper said this: the test of authentic devotions is this. It's challenged me. Listen, do you feel good that you had them? Do you feel good that you had the devotions? You read the Bible, that you talked to the Lord. Do you feel good that you had them? Or that you heard him. Boy, didn't that challenge you? Doesn't that challenge you? It challenges me because so often I'll just finish my reading. Okay, I'm done. And and I'll move and go out to my next thing for the day. Oh, but that's not the challenge of our life. That's not what God wants for us. He wants a relationship with him. He wants us to talk to him. And him to talk to us. He wants to speak to our hearts. Tonight, let me ask you, church. When was the last time you heard from God? 
Maybe you had devotions every day this week, but don't be satisfied that you had your devotions. Oh, be satisfied only when you heard from the Almighty God. And when He spoke to your heart tonight, my challenge is for us to first pray, Hey God, open my heart. Open my heart. For here, Here's the thing. How is God going to use us if our hearts aren't open? If our hearts aren't being led by the Spirit of God? How are we going to do ministry for Him? How is He going to use us through the power of His Holy Spirit? without us even having our hearts open, but yet, he still could. We need open hearts. You're there in, uh, first, or, or, you're there in uh, Psalms one, uh, 119. Psalms 119. And uh, the verse I want to read for this point is one of the greatest uh, psalms in the Word of God. It's all about the Word of God. It's awesome. You say, oh, Jeremy, I never read this one. This is the longest one. This is that long one. This is the one. This is that chapter I always skip because it's, you know, 170 some verses long. I, hey, you should read it sometime. It is awesome. And I challenge you tonight when you go home, read this Psalm, Psalm 119. And it is awesome. In uh, verse 18 of Psalm 119, uh, the Word of God says this. Listen to this. This is, this is like a prayer. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You hear that? Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You know, I challenge you tonight to make that your prayer tonight. Make that your prayer to the Lord. Lord, open my eyes that I can see wondrous things out of your law, out of your word, Lord, as I open it. God, speak to my heart, Lord. Lord, I want to hear from you. Open my eyes, open my heart, that I could see your word and that your word could change my heart. You know, as I already mentioned, it is God who opens the heart. It is God that speaks. It, without the Holy Spirit drawing us, God cannot save somebody. They may hear the gospel, but if God isn't pulling them, drawing them into his name, hey, they cannot be saved. You know that because you felt the Holy Spirit tug your heart when you were saved, didn't you? You know, just like God can only open up the hearts of the lost people, God needs to open up our hearts, doesn't he? God needs to open up our hearts and, and to take off our spiritual blinders, that we'd open up our hearts and that he can pour into our lives and show us wondrous things out of his law. It is only God who opens hearts. And isn't it amazing how God can open our heart? But it shouldn't amaze us how God can open our heart, for he is the one who created our hearts, didn't he? And he knows the exact key to open up each and every heart. You know, there's sometimes my heart is cold and he knows the exact thing to open my heart. You know, there's times where I, my heart was cold. I didn't even know my heart was cold. I didn't even know I was away from the Lord. And then a song came on the radio or a song was sung here from, from church, a choir song or, or one of the special songs or one of the hymns that we sang. And God opened up my heart and he spoke to me. And maybe sometimes God uses pain in our life to open up our hearts, doesn't He? Sometimes I'm away from Him and, and He allows pain into my life. And I say, Lord, why do you allow the pain in my life? He's just using the key. He knows what key fits our heart. And He knows what will open up our heart so we can grow and so we can know Him. Sometimes it's a phone call. I, I remember one time I was getting ready to, um, I was studying for a message and and I was getting ready to pour into it, and I got a phone call. I saw who came up, and I was like, "Man, I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to get into my message of study. And should I answer the call? Should not? I can't feel my cell phone. I saw who it was, and it was a, it was a family member. And I was like, "Man, I don't know. I don't know. It's not one of my family members that are here tonight, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, and, and I, I was like, I want to talk to him, but I, I really, I, I need to get in the message. I was like, I just call my, but I answered the phone, and that conversation changed everything. I, in fact, I had a message, I had, but it, God directed me to just one spot in that message, and that's where I preached from. And, and I remember that service, God moved mightily. It was through a phone call as God was taking the key and opening my heart and directing my heart where He wanted it to go. See, God has the key to your heart tonight. But would you pray with me tonight that God would open up your heart? Because God knows how to open up your heart. He uses pain. He uses so many things. He uses the Word of God to open our hearts, doesn't He? He opens up the Word of He uses the Word of God to open our hearts. 
So many times I've been reading in the Word of God and, and, uh, and it just, uh, I saw something new for the first time that I'd never seen. How many of you, uh, it, it, it happens so many times. I'll read through a passage and hey, I've memorized this verse. I've heard that verse preached. But yet God will open up my heart and show me something new through that verse. See, the Word of God will open up our heart. And see, God wants to speak to us tonight. He wants to direct you in, in your life. and he, he, In fact, I mean, He owns us, doesn't He? We're bought with a price. He wants to use you to serve Him in His kingdom. But He can't allow you to serve Him. You can't serve Him without your heart open to Him. Would you pray with me tonight that God would open your heart? There's a plan of action that goes with this, along with a prayer. We can... We, we should... Excuse me... <coughs> We surely should pray that God would open our hearts and, and prayer will lead to that. But there are some points of action that we can take and as we can put ourselves in position to, to hear the word of God and allow God to change our lives. We should meditate in the Bible daily. We should meditate in the Bible daily. Let me challenge you today, if you've never, uh, ever in your life, you, or maybe you have, but you've, you, you've wandered away from it, you've gotten off track from it. If you don't spend time daily in the word of God, Hey, today, tonight is a great night to start. Hey, every one of us, we have all struggled with reading God's Word. I Me mean, included. Every one of us, we're, there's no difference. Tonight is a good night to get back to it. You know what? God will open your heart through the Word of God. Hey, if you're putting yourself, by reading the Word of God every day, if you're putting yourself in a position to hear from God, hey, God will speak to you. Meditate in the Word of God daily. Attend church services. Hey, and engage. Hey, come here. Uh, I've said this before. Come here with your bucket empty so God can fill it. Come today every, every time you come to service. I came this morning with my cup empty, ready for God to fill it, ready for God to do something in my life. Come expecting for God to work and be ready to hear from the Holy Spirit of God as He speaks to your heart. Attend church and engage. Uh, discuss with friends. Hey, when you get together with friends, hey, bring up the Word of God. Talk about the Word of God. Hey, share with them things that you've been uh, studying lately and uh, talk about the Word of God. So often, I know we have other interests. We have other things we like to talk about. I like talking about sports. I like talking about uh, other things in politics. And I like talking about spiritual things too. But so often we let the spiritual things go on the back burner sometimes. Hey, talk about those things because God can speak to us and open our hearts through that and also pray, which I already mentioned. The first thing tonight, the first challenge, is pray that your heart will be open. Pray that your heart will be open. And secondly tonight, pray that others' hearts will be open. This is a simple message. I told you it's a simple message. Pray that your heart will be open. And pray that others' hearts will be open too. Because I already said, hey, apart from the Holy Spirit working in our midst, we can't do anything for Him. It's got to be the work that God does through us. And He does that by opening hearts and changing lives through those open hearts. Let's turn to Acts chapter 16. You may already be there. Acts chapter 16. And, and I was reading this in, in part of my daily reading uh, recently. And God just, I, I read this and I've read this a million times. And really it just, my eyes were just open to this one verse as we'll get to in a second in the passage here. And really, my eyes were just open. It just really spoke to me. And, and actually, a lot of reason for this message tonight is a result of what you know, God was doing in my heart through this verse. Is he spoke to me. Here, uh, Paul is traveling with Silas. And it's on, he's on his second missionary journey. And uh, he went on the first one with Barnabas. But now he's with Silas. And they're traveling. They began. They went through Syria, uh, 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 confirming the churches. And they went through Derby and Lystra. And it's always amazing when I read how Paul goes back to Lystra. Everybody know what happened at Lystra to Paul? It's where he was stoned, right? <laughs> Paul went back there. He, he must have been crazy. Or maybe he just was led by the Holy Spirit of God. Maybe he just really believed God and just followed him. That, that's amazing, isn't it? He went back to where he was stoned. And, uh, and he went to Galatia there. And it was, if you read the previous verses. And, but then the Spirit stopped him. The Spirit stopped him. He was getting ready to go into Asia. But then the Spirit stopped him. And uh, as we're going to see, the Spirit told him to go to Macedonia. And let's pick up reading in Acts chapter 16, verse 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, 
saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Notice how, hey, Paul didn't mess around. He heard the word from the Lord and he went, they went, they endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering. Listen, why they want to go? That the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came uh, with a straight course unto Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, in a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. Now, here's what happened when they got to Philippi there in Macedonia, or, or Europe, actually. We're going to see in just a second how the first convert in the continent of Europe right here in verse 13, it says, And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside, where Paul, where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women, which resorted thither. So here Paul and Silas, they kind of show up at a ladies' prayer meeting, kind of, I guess. And, and uh, these ladies were praying by the riverside, and they showed up. And in verse 14, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me, be faithful unto the Lord. Come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Did you pick out what happened there in verse 14? Here Lydia, she hears the word of God as Paul shares the truth of the word of God. Paul shares the word of God. And she believed. And why did she believe? Because look in the middle of verse 14. Whose heart the Lord opened. You know why God led them to Macedonia? Why He didn't let them go to Asia? Why He sent them to Macedonia and He sent them to Philippi and He sent them to the riverside of that lady's prayer meeting? Why? Because He was opening a lady's heart there named Lydia. God was working on her heart and He opened her heart and when she heard the word of God, she responded. Hey, and she really got saved too, didn't she? Hey, her whole family got saved when she got saved. She took them back and she said, hey, Paul, let me introduce you to my family. And man, God started working on the family. And he says, hey, the whole family was baptized. They all followed Jesus after they were saved. And God began a great work there. And then she brought them back to the house. She said, hey, Paul, we need to start a church. Let's start my house. She was kind of convincing lady. She probably led a whole lot of people to the Lord, don't you think? She was an amazing lady. But it all started how? It all started how? Because her heart was opened by the Holy Spirit of God. She, her heart was opened by the Holy Spirit of God. And that's why we need to pray for others' hearts to be open. Martin Luther said we need to pray as if everything depends upon God. And, and truly it does as we've already said. A pastor, another pastor said this, Therefore, the most important element in evangelism is imploring God through prayer to open hearts, for without this there can be no genuine conversion. Let me tell you tonight, we need to pray. One of the top things on our prayer list should be to pray for God to open hearts. For God to open hearts here in our church. For God to open hearts in our community, in our job site, in the people that we work with, and the people that we're, uh, we're sharing Christ with. We need God to open their hearts. There may be some of you thinking, I've shared the gospel with them so many times. I've given them tracts. I've done this and this. Have you ever prayed for God to open their hearts? Have you ever prayed, God, open their hearts so they can receive your word and be saved? Let me tell you tonight, just as important as the preaching, just as important as the witnessing, is the praying for God to open hearts. For without it, the preaching and the sharing is in vain. We need God to open hearts. And here's the awesome thing. You may say tonight, Jeremy, I, I can't preach. God never called me to preach. God didn't call me to do all these things. And I can't teach. I can't do all these things. And you may say, I'm not very gifted. I can't. Hey, you know what the most gifted person in our church is, I think? The person I think who is the most gifted in our church, well, first, let me stop. The person who's doing what God called them to do, everybody has different gifts. And let me tell you, one of the most overlooked gifts in church is the prayer warriors. You prayer warriors, and you pray. Before you came tonight, you were on your face before God. The whole reason that I could have the power of God on me when I preach or pastor on Him while He preaches, or, or Brother Jared and his ministry up there, or any ministry out here, or, or as we share the gospel, is because you were praying. 
Oh, don't quit doing that. You may say, oh, all I can do is pray. Hey, that is an awesome ministry. That's one of the best ministries that you could have is praying. I challenge you to pray. Hey, prayer is an amazing thing. We need people to pray. Spurgeon said, I'd rather teach one man to pray than ten men to preach. And he was the prince of preachers. I think he just knew the power of prayer. We need to pray that the hearts will be open of lost people. We need to pray that God would reach out and save lost people. Hey, there's lost people that are here every week. Every week there's people that are lost that are here. So many of them we know by name. Are we praying for them by name to be saved? Let me challenge you tonight. Who is on the high, who, who's, who's on the top of our prayer list? What's on the top of our prayer list? You know, so often we pray for our health needs. We all have health needs. And I'm, if, if, if my family member was in the hospital, I'd be praying for them big time right now. And it'd be high on my list. But you know what? Sometimes I think we pray too much for earthly things and not spiritual things. God was convicting about that. What, what's more important? That somebody would be healed spiritually and be saved. Or that somebody would be healed physically. Oh, let me tell you today, we need to make sure that we're busy about spiritual business. Oh, and our concern is for lost people who are one day going to split hell wide open. A real burning hell. Are we burdened for their souls? How high are they on our prayer list? Oh, the lost, we should be praying for them. Praying that God would open their hearts. We're praying for the backslidden, the ones that are here. They used to be. I mean, challenge you, don't give up on them tonight. Don't give up on them. I, I know how it is. I, there's, there's people that I, I know closely who uh, so I, I want to give up. I want to say, oh, they're never going to turn back to the Lord. It's, it's useless. Oh, but it's not, is it? <laughs> it's not, is it? It's not useless. They may come back. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying that God would open their hearts. Pray for the church members here, our leaders. Pray for our, our, our leaders politically in, in our town, in our state, in our country. That God would lead them and guide them. Pray for our workers here as we go about serving and sharing the gospel. That open hearts will be found. We need to pray that God would open the hearts of our people. You know, this is something, it's a prayer, but it's also an action. We need to pray for our hearts to be open, but we can also put ourselves in position to where our hearts can be opened by the Word of God. And we need to pray that others' hearts will be open, but there's something that we can do as well that goes along with this, and there's some action. Today in our text, here in Acts chapter 16, Lydia would have never heard the gospel. Even if her heart was open, she would never have heard if Paul wouldn't have responded and gone. So I don't want to challenge you to not only just not pray like ever. Martin Luther, I didn't finish the end of this quote earlier. Martin Luther said, pray as if everything depends on God. Then work as if everything depends on you. Hey, we need to put feet on our prayers sometimes, don't we? Sometimes we're guilty of praying too much and not having any action to go along with our prayers. And let me challenge you with that as well tonight. Maybe you've prayed and prayed and prayed for this person for years. But when was the last time you went to them lovingly, confronted them with the gospel, and shared and said, hey, I've been praying for you again. I want you to be saved when you trust Christ. When was the last time you put feet on those prayers? See, it needs to be a form of action as well. See, they have to hear in order to believe. In fact, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said when he sent the disciples out in Matthew 10, 11, he said, he said, in whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire in it who is worthy and there abide till you go. Then Jesus said, hey, go find the ones who are opening their hearts and share the gospel with them and they'll be saved. We need to tell people about Jesus Christ as we're praying for hearts to be open. And we need to tell everybody because you never know. You never know who might be there. I, I try every time I preach to share the gospel. Why? Because I don't know who's here tonight. I don't know who's here tonight. I may know your face. I may know your name. I may think you're even a member of this church. 
But you've never received Jesus as your Savior and you need the gospel tonight. We never know who is in the crowd and that's why we have to keep... <coughs> We have to keep preaching. We have to keep sharing the gospel wherever we are. Even amongst those who don't know the truth, uh, somebody there, their heart is ready to receive it. And even to how cold the audience may be, we think in our minds, there's almost always somebody whose heart is open, who God is ready to see saved. God's been drawing them, but we've got to share them the truth. The truth that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. And He died on the cross. He paid the penalty that you and I owe as sinners. And He suffered and bled and died and gave His life for ours so we could be saved. And that is the gospel that we share. And that is why we pray for people to be saved. Tonight, is your heart open? Have you been praying for open hearts? I challenge you to. When we work it's just us. But when we pray, God works. And we have to have the supernatural power of God. It is by Him that great things are done. Will you pray? Let's stand to our feet as we have a time of invitation. Is your heart open tonight? Maybe God has opened up your heart tonight. Maybe you've never trusted that Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight. You know who Jesus is, just like Lydia. Lydia knew who Jesus was. She, she, uh, she, she believed in the Lord, but she wasn't saved. Tonight, would you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and be born again? Is there somebody here tonight you've never been saved? You know who you are because the Holy Spirit's opened your heart and He's speaking to you. Now all that's left, all that's left is for you to respond. Won't you come forward right now? Our pastor's here in the front and he'll guide you and show you how you can trust Jesus as your Savior and be saved. Won't you come right now? Maybe Christian, God's opened your heart about something else in your life. Would you come right now and pray and talk to the Lord about it? Maybe you need to make a commitment tonight that you're going to pray for the lost. And you're going to pray that God would open up hearts. And you're going to pray that God would move mightily in your ministry, in your home, in your witness as you share the gospel wherever you're at. Would you pray for open hearts tonight? I challenge you, everyone, pray for open hearts. Even right now, pray that God would open up hearts in our midst. Pray that God would open up hearts as the word of God goes forth. As you go to work this week, pray for God. God, open up hearts. God, you know the one I've been praying for. God, open their heart this week that they could receive Christ. Won't you pray? We know it all depends upon God. We know the Holy Spirit has to draw them for them to be saved. Won't you pray for it tonight? Pray for God to move. If you need to make another decision, if you need to come forward and join our church, you want to make a decision to uh, be baptized, or you need to recommit your life to Christ, or whatever other decision you need to do, you make your way forward to right now. If you just need to come forward and pray, you come right now. Don't delay. Brother Dan's going to begin saying invitation. And, uh, you respond right now. Let the Holy Spirit guide you.